Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, we are going to cover the squeeze theorem. We are going to talk about what it is, and then we are going to go through three practice problems where we can see how it may be applied and how you can tackle this on your AP Calculus exam. So first things first, what is it and what does it tell us? So you can kind of see over here in the image on the right, um, basically, what happens is that some functions are hard to take the limit of. For example, in the case of our graph over here on the right, you it's a little bit hard to see, but it actually oscillates around zero. So we could not take the limit directly as x approaches zero. So what we can do instead is we can actually squeeze or sandwich this function in between two other functions, and then we can take the limit of those functions. So in this case, you can see here this upper bound limit here it looks like it's a red color let's just say this is our f of x function and then down here below this is a light green color let's say this is our h of x function and then in the middle here our actual function our target function we could call it this darker blue function this would be our g of x function and so because we've squeezed or sandwiched g of x in between f and h if we can just take the limit of f and take the limit of h, if those both equal some number l, then we can conclude that our target function of g also equals l. So this theorem, I think, makes most sense if we go through some examples. So let's go ahead and look at a couple of practice problems and see how this can be applied. Okay, so this first question here is pretty basic. This question just requires that we know what the squeeze theorem visually looks like on a graph. So the question actually states, let f be a function of x. The value of the limit of f of x as x approaches a can be found using the squeeze theorem with the functions g and h. Which of the following could be the graphs of f, g, and h? So basically what we are looking for here is we are looking for our f of f f of x function to be squeezed in between g and h. So let's go through them one by one and see which one that the squeeze theorem would apply. So for a, this would not apply, right? If we look at our f function here, it is clearly not being squeezed between g and h, so we can confidently eliminate that one. b, if you weren't paying close attention to detail, this may look promising. However, if you notice, f is squeezed over on the left side of a, but on the right side of A, it is no longer squeezed, right? It goes up this way with G and H being below it, so it's not being squeezed. So B would not be correct. C, this looks okay in that F is in the middle of the two functions. However, it is not being squeezed in the middle of them, right? Remember, we would need the limits of all three to be the same, and this is clearly too far away, right? We need them to literally, the limits have to be the same at that point A. So C would not work. Moving on to D, this looks great, right? We have F being sandwiched in between here, in between G and H. And again, the limit of H would equal the limit of G, and then we could conclude that that is the limit of F. So D would be our winner. Okay, moving on. Okay, this question states, let F, G, and H be the functions defined by F of X equals sine of X over 2X, g of x equals x to the fourth times cosine of 1 over x squared, and h of x equals x squared over tangent x, for x does not equal 0. All of the following inequalities are true on the interval negative 1 to 1, for x does not equal 0. Which of the following inequalities can be used with the squeeze theorem to find the limit of the function as x approaches 0? Okay, so first things first, we know that the limit of the outer functions must be equal. So taking a look at 1, if I took the limit of this side, it would just be 1 fourth, right, because that is a constant. And then over here on the right side, if I took the limit as x approaches 0 of this function, if I just use direct substitution, I would get 0 squared is 0, and then plus 1 half is 1 half. So my limit over here on the left side would be 1 fourth, but my limit over here on the right side would be 1 half. So this would not work. This would kind of be like the case we just saw where the functions were too far apart and f wasn't properly sandwiched in between them, right? We need those outer numbers to match. So 1 would be out and I'm immediately going to eliminate this and this. 
Moving on to two, let's see, this looks more symmetrical already. So if we took the limit of this side as x approaches zero, we would just get zero. And if we took the limit of this side as x approaches zero, we would also get zero. So this would in fact work. So we like two, which of course we actually already knew that was gonna work, just using process of elimination because two is an answer choices B and D. Anyways, moving on to three, let's see if this works. If we were to direct substitute zero in for X, we would find that these limits actually do not exist. So three would not work. So the correct answer would be answer choice B, two only. Okay, moving on. Okay, this is the third common type of squeeze theorem problem you may see. So it says let g and h be the functions defined by g of x equals sine of pi over 2 times x plus 4, and h of x equals negative 1 fourth x to the third plus 3 over 4 x plus 9 over 2. If f is a function that satisfies g of x is less than or equal to f of x is less than or equal to h of x, for negative 1 is less than x is less than 2, what is the limit? of f of x as x approaches 1. So first things first, I'm identifying this as a squeeze theorem problem because of this here. This is what is tipping me off, that it is going to be squeeze theorem because f is being squeezed in between two outer functions, g and h. So now we need to figure out the limit of the left side or the limit of g as x approaches 1. So let's go ahead and do that first. I'm going to use direct substitution and I'm going to get the sine of pi over 2 times 1, which is still just pi over 2, plus 4. Now the sine of pi over 2 is 1, 1 plus 4 is 5. Now, so this would be the limit of the left side here. I'm just going to write it like that. And now let's go ahead and take the limit of h of x as x approaches 1. So using direct substitution, I'm going to get negative 1 fourth times 1 to the third, which of course is just 1 plus 3 over 4 times 1 plus 9 over 2. So cleaning this up, this is still just going to be negative 1 over 4 plus 3 over 4. And now I'm going to get a common denominator here and write this as 18 over 4. So now negative 1 over 4 plus 3 over 4 gives me 2 over 4 plus 18 over 4 gives me 20 over 4, which simplifies down to 5. So this is exactly what I want. I want these two to equal. And then I can conclude that the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x is also equal to 5 using the squeeze theorem. So in this case, the correct answer would be answer choice C. One quick little note. If we were to get answer choice D, the limit cannot be determined. This would happen when these numbers don't equal. So let's say I took the limit of G and let's just say I got two and let's say I took the limit of H and let's say I got seven. In this case, I would conclude that the answer the correct answer would be D because again, these are too far apart, right? My function has to be squeezed in between these two numbers and basically all of the limits have to be the same. All right. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.